Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, AJ Two and Love, and it's good to be back here to host for your NXT review for July 29th, 2020. Was a really good show. I would have to say, now, before I get into the show and the review, AW won the rings this week. And I think, well, I was more pumped, I would say, for the NXT main event um, with Thatcher, Balor, and Loomis than I was for the tag team match uh, between Moxley, uh, excuse me, Darby Allen, uh, Ricky Sarks, and Brian Cage. With all that said, uh, I was so pumped for both main events, but I think still both solid shows, but again, rings, I don't think really matter. Uh, just want both shows to be good. And both were good this week. A lot to go over. Um, like I said, the main event, we also had uh, Gargano, Johnny Gargano versus Roger Trong. Pretty solid match as well. Uh, so with that, uh, getting to the show, Sally. So the show started off with Io Shirai and Tegan Knox. Um, versus Kansas Ray and the Kokai. Now, while I love the Kokai and love what the uh, women are doing in NXT, um, part of the reason you could say AEW won the rings is, well, they started off with Chris Jericho and the Inner Circle, and AEW... Um, well, the wrestling community morally knows Chris Jericho than opposed uh, the women here in NXT, and that's not a knock on them. It's just borderline probably reason as to why AEW got the jump because, well, more noble names. But nonetheless, uh, so... Um, much like last week, uh, Dakokai um, attacked Io Shirai. Um, before the match started, uh, there was a little uh, brawl between the four women. And then all of a sudden they got in the ring and then the match started. wasn't that really long. Um, but at the end of it, just getting to the end of it... Um, was a moonsault by Shirai on Kansas RA for the win. See, Io Shirai and Kansas RA is a potential title match. Um, but kind of gave that away. Kind of, um, downgrading Kansas RA. Um, see, Loray, although her... I like her heel turn. Um, it's just been um, difficult still because she's still flowing around uh, in the middle of all the women. Because um, looks to be, well, I think the Kokai and Yo know, Shirai at TakeOver 30. Uh, and then maybe a match with Rhea Ripley. And same goes for Johnny Gargano. Um, I would still imagine that they're going to do the whole uh, husband wife uh, duo as champion. Uh, it's just not the time yet. But so is an okay match. So if you didn't think that the Am Cole Pat McAfee uh, thing uh, was a work, well, I think it was pretty obvious. Uh, now that is because if it wasn't a work, then they wouldn't have uh, used it as on SCTV, which they did. 
they were kind of touching on the segments and the altercation on Pat McAfee's show. So, it is what it is, I would say. Next up, we had Johnny Gargano versus Roger Strong. Pretty good match. Um, these two, although they have not been in the ring with each other um, much in NXT, despite both being in NXT for a long time or for many years, um, these two, uh, it was just back and forth, back and forth. Live reversals. Um, hard for one to get the upper hand. Uh, Gargano hit a flying flatliner for two count. Um, there was a Gargano escape counter for two count by Roger Chung. And just counter for counter uh, reversal after reversal. Um, despite not being, like you said, despite not much experience in the ring together. These two pretty much read each other like a book. Um, then at the end, Garg- Gargano hit the one final beat DT on strong for the win. I mean, see, the young spear there, um, Roddy is really good in the ring. Um, while the Unspewed Era, I mean, Gargano is the one that they're um, pushing more. So, right outcome uh, and solid match. Next up, um, we had an interview of Dakota Kai Shing. She's tired of uh, going through hoops, triple threats, fail four ways. And she claims herself as the number one contender. And then all of a sudden, Rhea Ripley came in. And then basically said that the shot is not for Dakota. That it's her shot against Io. And that, um, so Dakota said she'll talk with William Regal about it. And then. There was that. Also, the hair change of Rhea Ripley. I didn't really like it. Looks odd to me, um, but it is what it is. So, next, after we had a little backstage um, reunion of the Unspirit Era, um, Kyle O'Reilly. Return to the Unspear era. He's definitely grown out that beard. Um, um, they were a little arguing backstage, and then um, Kyle Riley came in and said, reminded them of who they were, the Unspear era, how they run the place, and um, all of a sudden they seemed focused and. There was that. The Unspear is not really complete without Kyle. Um, but it's good to see all four of them back together. Especially in the... Excuse me, in Full Sail. I mean, obviously, Kyle's been with them through the vignettes. And uh, unspewed therapy, but still, it is what. It is. Next up, we had Chachi Blackheart for Mercedes Martinez. Mercedes Martinez came out with Aaliyah and Ro- and Robert Stone in her corner. I mean, it's nice to see a more serious feel around the Robert Stone brand, despite all the gimmicky comedy crap. That surrounded the Robert Stone brand uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, Mercedes um, hit a, I would say, um, 
uh, Death Valley driver of sorts uh, on Shotzi for the win. I mean, clearly Mercedes is the more serious dominant female than, say, Aaliyah. And like I said, good to see a difference in the Robert Stone brand. So the next we had a vignette of Rich Holland um, who um, says he's coming for the XC North American Championship. Uh, he's apparently um, a star from XC UK, but of course XC UK has been pretty much on ice since the pandemic and restrictions. So... Now he's come to NXT Global and will make his debut next week, which I'll touch on in a bit. So next, uh, we had Keith Lee come out. He addressed the he addressed Dominic Dijakovic, his friend, saying he'll be fine after being. Uh, he took from Cross last week, and then he addressed Karen Cross, um, talking about the bull uh, that Cross has spurred over the last few weeks. And then he called out Cross, saying he doesn't have the balls to show up to him face to face. And now came Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes, you love Cameron Grimes, but this was not the right time to come out and confront Keith Lee. And then Keith Lee have Goozle and throw him around the ring. And then all of a sudden, Scarlett came out at the top of the stage. Once again, good. She hasn't said anything. Um... So it was good to see Scarlett and then uh, Keith Lee um, hit Grimes with a spirit bomb and then all of a sudden Cross came on the Titan Tron. Um, talked about saying, well, do this the easy way or the hard way. That if he doesn't give him his shot at the NXT Championship. Others will suffer. So there was that. And Keith Lee said, You named the time, you named the place, and I'll whoop your ass. And so there was that. And on the scene, it's clearly inevitable. Cross and Keith Lee kind of saying that Keith Lee is going to become this transitional champion, but it is what it is. Can't wait for the match, though. Next up, uh, we have the return of Imperium, the NXT Tag Team Champions. Um, and they took on Everize, who has been Basically, the glorified jobbers of the tag team division. But the NXT tag team division is kind of in ruins. So, I mean, as what it is. This was pretty short. Um, mostly dominated by uh, Imperium. I, get, I mean, European bomb for the win. Um, Afterwards, say, um, Marcel Bartel um, was about to say something on the microphone. Then all of a sudden, European, or excuse me, yeah. Undisputed Era, sorry about that. Undisputed Era's theme hit, and they stormed to the ring and attacked Bartel and Eichner, left them in a heap, and 
Adam Cole said, this is what happens, and that they still run NXT. What I would love to see, although I'm not sure, we're still a few months out, and I wonder if, assuming things get a little better, um, I assume this is kind of plant the seed on the spirit era versus Imperium, you know, alt plus Walter and Alexander Wolf. Four on four war games in November. Again, we'll have to see how these restrictions and stuff are going if things will get easier. But that was the one thing I thought about after this segment. Could happen, could not, we'll see. But that's what I thought. So next we had a vignette on Bronson Reed documenting his journey and talking about his win last week um, against um, well first he talked about his first match in the breakout tournament last year against Dexter Loomis uh, and then coming up to now um, after his win over Roddy and Gargano last week I mean, this is what you like about these vignettes. Get to know these um, superstars, these wrestlers. uh, Get a little bit more into their character and who they are. And Bronson Reed, um, he's getting better and better each week. That's what you love. You love the development. You love the growth of certain wrestlers. And... It's kind of documented. I can't wait to see what he does in the North American Championship ladder match at TakeOver. So we'll see how it goes. So after that, we had William Regal uh, responding to the events um, earlier between Karen Cross and Keith Lee. And said he will not be bullied into making tile matches. And that tile matches will be earned. So, there's that. Here's my thing, though. I will still say. The thing I said about Cross is he doesn't have enough wins. uh, Knowable wins under his belt. I think with TakeOver 30 a little over a month away, if he can get a few more noble wins, maybe that's what happens. Or maybe um, Cross makes threats to William Regal. I'm not sure. So next we had Isaiah Swerve Scott for Jake Atlas. This was a decent match. Um, Swerve uh, documented last week about how he's the only one to beat Santos Escobar. And, I mean, maybe they built toward that match at um, TakeOver. Um, haven't seen Drake Maverick on XCTV a couple of weeks. Maybe he has COVID. I'm not sure. But that may be the match they're going to set up. And Jake Atlas, he's been kind of been here or there when it comes to division. Uh, he did well in this match. Um, he had one percenter um, for two count. And then um, Swerve hit the ML driver uh, for the win 
on Jake Ellis. I mean, Swerve, he's talented. Get more wins like this under his belt. And, you know, I'd like to see a match between him and Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship. Next. So next we had an uh, interview with Damian Priest. Uh, Mackenzie Mitchell announced that he will face and another qualifying match for the ladder match at TakeOver 30. It'll be him versus Rich Holland making his debut at XC Global versus Oni Larkin. Um, this is okay. Um, he talked about how last week that it was a surprise uh, victory uh, by Bronson Reed, and this time there will not be a surprise victory. The favorite will win, and Damian Priest. Damian Priest, um, I mean, again, um, I thought Gargano was going to win last week. He didn't. And. As we see in the main event, the uh, favorite didn't win either. Or I think not. I'm not sure who was the favorite, but could have gone either way. So after, after that, we had the main event. Dexter Loomis first Finn Balor first Timothy Thatcher. This was a heck of a match. Um, was a contrast of styles. I was curious how they're going to go about this because all three of these guys uh, could have easily put in the ladder match. There was a cool spot where um, Loomis, he went over the top rope and he landed on his feet. Kind of similar to what Ricochet did um, in front of Velveteen Dream when they were feuding. But Thatcher, and after that, Thatcher and Bauer had this look on face like, holy crap. So then uh, Bauer was targeting uh, Loomis' ankle. And actually hit a Pele kick as well. And hit a final cut to um, Thatcher. And his swing blade on Loomis. Thatcher, um, he has slammed um, while, while Bauer was going for the corner drop kick. Thatcher slammed Bauer's leg into the ring post. And... Um, had like a heel hook on it. Then a spine buster by Loomis. Uh, Bauer hit the crew gras, but couldn't capitalize really because of his leg. So then Loomis, um, well, at the end of the match, um, uh, Thatcher had an ankle lock cinched up on Bauer in the middle ring and like a snake creepy as Dex Loomis can be crawled up right behind um, Thatcher and locked on his arm triangle um, while at the same time Thatcher still had the ankle lock applied to Bauer. And then all of a sudden, uh, Thatcher passes out. Excuse me. He lets go of the ankle lock. Excuse me. And Loomis wins. And he qualifies for takeover 30. To be... For the North American Championship ladder match. And we. 
went off the air with a great visual of Loomis looking at the North American Championship. I mean, so far it's been shaping up to be an epic ladder match for TakeOver 30. Um, Brots Reed last week. Dex Loomis this week. I'm predicting Damian Priest wins next week. And then for the final t- two triple threat matches, I'm not sure. But it's starting to be exciting for the tall match at TakeOver. So that was the show. Like I said, pretty good show. And then, oh, they also uh, confirmed for next week, um, we have a tag team match, title match between the Imperium and Cal Raleigh's first match back um, in the pandemic era. Um, teaming up with Bobby Fish, um, challenging Imperium for the tag team titles. Also, we got... Number one contenders match uh, for the women's championship. Rhea Ripley versus the Kohai. Again, uh, so yes, going to be interesting next week. Um, but hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I'll be back Monday for another episode of Sports Overview of Topics. But this was a fun show. Um, I uh, hope everyone's being safe, and I'll see you guys back on Monday. Also, like and subscribe if you're new. Click on the bell, and I'll see you back on Monday.